Okay, so today we're looking at a, uh, a new 7000 series Miele dishwasher. And the first thing we're going to see that's a little bit different is the controls are no longer those uh, physical push buttons that they've had for forever. Uh, I think in the 90s up into the early 2000s they had like little rubber push buttons and then those were replaced in um, really I think it was probably 2005 with the, uh, the first 2000 series dishwashers with kind of little silver plastic push buttons, uh, which I love. Uh, but the Miele has been making their own uh, electronics for a very long time, I think going back into the 80s. Um, but they've had their own sensor controls since their, um, their first US uh, full-size wall ovens. Um, those 300 series wall ovens had sensor controls. At the time, they weren't that great. They weren't very responsive. Um, and again, in 2005, 2006, they updated those ovens with newer controls, which were way more responsive. And um, they, you know, they still have a Sensortronic uh, series of ovens today, which, which actually I think is better in a lot of ways than the uh, the touch control version of their ovens. Um, so anyhow, these these sensor controls, I'm guessing, are probably all made by Miele. Um, I did hear a figure that Miele makes something like over 90% of the componentry in their dishwashers. Um, so anyhow, so super responsive uh, controls. Oh, let me show you that, and that doesn't work. So I've got this in demo mode. Uh, we will be using this dishwasher live, so I will be able to do a follow-up video where we can hear it uh, run. Everybody talks about how quiet a dishwasher is. You know, my opinion is anything under 46 decibels, you know, should be virtually silent and it's going to be fantastic. You know, people that are like, oh, I've got to get this one because it's 41 decibels or 42 decibels or 38 decibels. You're, you're being ridiculous. Just please stop it. You're, you're embarrassing yourself. Um, so a couple of, couple of changes. The main change on these new dishwashers is their, uh, their auto dose uh, system with power discs. So this, you know, you've got a little thing that unlocks that then hinges uh, open and you can now take one of Mila's power discs, which they do give you with the uh, dishwasher. Uh, that, that was actually inside when we unpacked it. So that will then plug in there and uh, this series of dishwashers will automatically dispense the appropriate amount of detergent down uh, here, I'm guessing, into the, uh, into the sump during a cycle. Now that will do a couple things. One, it, you, uh, you, know, you don't have to load the detergent, which is kind of nice. You can just press start. Uh, great automated feature. Um, it also is going to dispense an appropriate amount of detergent. And if you ask most people, you know, how much detergent should they put in their dishwasher, you know, they're probably going to pack this thing, uh, which is crazy unnecessary. You can see there are little lines, and in most cases you need like, you know, not more than about a teaspoon of detergent. Um, so I think that's why these little capsules and pills are, are now so popular because it really prevents people from overdoing it with uh, with detergent. Um, now, there are different lines in there and they're you know, probably for different cycles and, uh, and uh, soil levels. So lightly soiled, you need very little detergent. We don't want the detergent um, etching the, uh, the, the glasses and the plates. Uh, so lower temperatures are, are better for lightly soiled and, and, and a lower amount of soap. You know, if you've got heavily soiled things, there we want higher temperature to make the enzymes more aggressive. And then of course we want to have more detergent. So this system uh, is great because it'll, the, the, the dishwasher knows exactly what it needs uh, based on uh, the cycle that you've chosen. And I'm sure the sensors, the wash sensors may even, may even uh, uh, adjust what this, uh, what this will use. Um, supposedly you'll get about, uh, I wanna say 20 cycles on, on, these, uh, on these things, uh, which isn't bad. I'm sure the detergent isn't going to be cheap, but it'll probably be in line with um, with Finish and Cascade and everybody else. Um, and you can get these uh, from the Mila website. I'd be willing to bet that you can get them from Amazon and uh, and of course your local uh, Mila dealer should have them as well. Uh, here is your rinse agent. Now this compartment looks like it hasn't changed much. The soap dispenser did. So the old soap dispenser was hinged. This is kind of more of a Bosch style uh, soap dispenser. 
the little compartment here. I don't know if I like it as much, but you know, that's different. It's new. Obviously this is new because it's uh, again, probably where your, your detergent comes out from the power disc. Um, down here, we've got some new revised plastics uh, and a different handle grip on this model. This model, by the way, this replaces, um, at least from a price point standpoint, it replaces the, the old Dimension Series dishwashers. Uh, this is a G, if we can read this or not, this is a G, 60, I'm sorry, 7366 SCVI. Uh, and, you, and you can see the little SF at the end. The SF is for a stainless steel front. Uh, so this uh, SCVI models all have controls at the top of the door. And then if you've got an SF at the end of the model number, it'll come with the stainless front, uh, coated stainless. And then unfortunately, you know, Mila puts this big, goofy, chunky handle that doesn't really match anybody else's appliance. So uh, I've been saying this for years, you know, Mila, stop that, give, you know, give us a pocket handle so we can put your dishwasher in uh, other, you know, other kitchens. And if we're doing a Sub-Zero Wolf kitchen, we want to put a Mila in there or uh, KitchenAid kitchen. Uh, you know, it would be great if we had something that, that, that was a little less unique. Now, Mila does make dishwashers with pocket handles currently, but they don't do them with hidden control. So, uh, we'd love to see hidden controls and a pocket handle. Mila, for the love of God, like all of your competitors have been doing this for years. Like, you know, get on the ball here, guys. Um, so anyhow, back to the, back to the rack. So this, um, price point wise, like I said, is very similar to, uh, last generation's, uh, dimension series dishwasher. So revised plastics handle, uh, you know, on the previous generation, this rack was removable. So there was a little orange tab and you could actually remove that entire plate rack. So it looks like they've fixed that. I don't know if that was because, you know, the the people were having issues reinserting it and that would, you know, cause too many calls to the, um, to the customer service department, uh, which is, is likely. So this may help cut down on the, on the number of calls so you can get through to somebody quicker. Although I did like the option of being able to remove that. Uh, we've also got revised uh, cup shelves and stemware inserts. So, you know, these shelves, we can stack smaller cups or, uh, or larger utensils on here. Uh, they've also got little bits of silicon in there so that we can, um, we can grab large pieces of stemware. Now, uh, last year at this price point, we had a cup shelf here, but we also had a small cup shelf here and here. Uh, we also had a foldable of uh, like a vase insert uh, or sports bottle insert, uh, which has been omitted. And then uh, this row of tines is foldable. Right? And then last year, this row was also foldable. So they have really kind of a big downgrade on uh, at this price point from a, a racking flexibility standpoint. Uh, I don't know if Mula thought we like we wouldn't notice. I don't know. But anyhow, so a couple changes. We lost a few things. We still get those two really nice uh, stemware uh, cup shelves. We also lost there was a foldable arm for large pieces of. Um, of you know champagne glasses or whatever um, that will probably be all of those things will probably be available on the model above this which is going to be a g75 so this is a g73 go to the g75 probably going to be a 200 or a 300 dollar jump in price uh, i love having as much flexibility in the in the uh, racking you know racks with mila because they last forever uh and you know you're if you're going to own something that long, you know, a couple hundred dollars, you know, you, you might save that now, but then, you know, let's, I'll, I'll drop that at a bar taking friends out one in one night. So I'm going to have a dishwasher for 20 years. Let me get the, the features and the flexibility, uh, that, that, you know, on there that makes sense. Now, if we're looking at a Bosch dishwasher, Bosch's little plastic bits tend to fall apart fairly easily. Like in the showroom, less than a year old, these little plastic things are falling off. The racks are flopping over. And I, and I do kind of like the sturdiness of the Bosch's racks on the lower end end models where the higher end models have a ton of these little plastic bits that fall apart. Um, although, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not a, not a big fan of the, the Bosch racking system. So uh, some changes here. Uh, one of the bigger changes I've noticed is that forever Mila has had that wash feed on the outside of the tub. You know, those feeds are, um, are not shared with the other wash arms, like a standard dishwasher. And in the past, we, we you know, we didn't see that. I, I'm, I'm wondering what the reason for, for bringing that in there. Maybe it was to point out that it is a separate feed. Uh, you can see it looks like there's there's two lines, one for the upper wash arm uh, or middle wash arm, spray arm here. And then unlike most other manufacturers, you know, because of the silverware tray, uh, you have a, a, a wash arm on the roof. So you can see 
what I think or I believe is a, is a split in the middle there so that we can feed pressure to those wash arms differently. Um, so that's, uh, it's always been there that you had separate feeds for those wash arms, but I think this is the first generation where I've seen where they brought it inside the tub. Uh, slightly different uh, design to the water softener lid there, and then a huge difference on the on the uh, filter. So one, uh, the stainless steel wash arm uh, went to plastic. I'm guessing for a cost saving measure, and then um, you know it's still a quarter turn and lift. So we take the wash arm off as the, I guess the top of the filter, and then I'm guessing this is a quarter turn. It is. And now we have this kind of Bosch style filter here. So uh, don't know anything about it. Don't know why it's there. Um, I don't know that it bothers me, but you know, it's kind of a little bit different. I always like their older uh, filter with a little trap door, but whatever. Uh, that I think is, uh, what is that? Is that where water is recycled into the, into the tub? Um, I don't know. So there's the wash system. Let's look at the middle rack real quick. So again, uh, gray plastics introduced, a little bit different design, uh, a massively different cup shelf. Um, these cup shelves, you know, I kind of like the fact that they look more sturdy. So before they were made out of this, this time, you know, kind of like this material here, um, but they didn't take up a lot of space. So I'm wondering, are we losing, are we losing a little bit of space? Why well, put a tall glass here, you know, is it, Am I losing a little bit of real estate? Now this is a pine glass, so this is rather tall and you can see that it actually folds under that lip. So maybe it doesn't. Uh, on the other side where the shelf kind of sits more mid-level, um, I can almost guarantee that it will come into conflict, but you know, it still seems to sit there okay. Um, so, so what are some changes? So again, uh, at this price point before this row here was foldable, it looks like it's fixed. However, we now have the ability to, uh, to adjust the number of spike tines here. So, so those thicker bowls, uh, like cereal bowls typically don't nest very nicely in a Miele or, or really a lot of different dishwashers. So it looks like you now have this, you know, Miele little folders here and here. I can do this on camera with one hand. Um, and what that does is it opens up those tines. So I can slide one, a couple of those bowls or nest a bunch of those bowls, uh, at least in the front half. If we go to the back half, you can see there is, no, there is no flexibility. These are all just fixed tines. Now the arms are still there. You can see those gray tines are running all the way back, but the flexibility adjustment stops uh, about the midway point. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, you know we've got the rubber, uh, or the silicon grips integrated here, uh, which was not there before. Same thing for the other side. So a little bit different um, cup shelf slash stemware holders, which I, I think are a nice upgrade. And then up top, a totally new 3D cutlery tray. And they probably don't even call it a 3D cutlery tray. Um, uh, with all Mila's, anywhere you see orange, you know, you've got adjustment. So you can see this still slides left to right like it did last year. Now, before you had a, an adjustment here and here to drop that, that center section down a little bit, that's gone. So this is now a fixed uh, area for your, you know, you know, ladles and spatula. It looks like from a height standpoint, it's not, um, it's not as high as it was before. So they have dropped it down a little bit, but before you could drop it down lower for, for larger items. Um, I'm guessing they kind of split the difference on that height adjustment. And again, here we go. We've got another little adjustment. Now this is adjustable in height. So we can raise or lower that rack. And that's probably to give us some extra clearance for the uh, for stemware down here. Uh, all Mila's have little triggers so you can adjust the, um, the dishwasher. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, you've got a position A, B, and C. And just like last year, you know, you could leave one side up and have one side down. So I can have this kind of rate at an angle. So I can put taller items here and maybe uh, taller items here or vice versa. So I think Mila said there's nine different ways we can adjust that with the three, um, you know, the three gears that we've got here and the three gears of, uh, that we've got here working independently. Uh, so a nine way adjustable rack is still there. Uh, overall, you know, not, not bad. Again, I'm a little bit disappointed that they pulled some things out of, at this price point. Uh, we do still have the auto open functionality. Um, and it's still a Mila. It looks like the build quality is still great. 
You know, I'm a little disappointed that washer arm's not stainless anymore, but I don't know if I care that much. I mean, it'll look cool, but whatever, it still cleans, right? Uh, all of the perimeter gaskets are the same. You know, Mila's aren't 24 inches. They're, uh, they're 23 and 5 eighths or, or 60 centimeters. So Mila has been giving us a gasket for US models to fill that gap in. And again, this was a 24 inch opening. So uh, it does fit in there quite nicely. You will see a little more of a gap here. Uh, and obviously here because of that 24 inch opening being slightly larger, but it's, it's not, it's not terrible. Uh, like all Mila stainless, it's coated. It can be spot cleaned. It doesn't oxidize. Great, great finish. I've had this, um, this finish on my Mila at home for like over maybe like 10 years now. Uh, and it's so much better than the original stainless steel panel that I had on it, which, which had scratches and fingerprints and water spots and all this other stuff. Uh, now I can just take a wet paper towel and, and just wipe it down and it always looks beautiful. I'm thinking that uh, these glass touch controls are also going to be um, you know, uh, much easier to clean. You can see that we've got remote uh, enabled functionality. You can download the Mila at home app. Um, I don't know. I guess that stuff is cool. I, I don't really, I don't know that there's a, a, a massive advantage in that. I know you can buy detergent or have automatic um, uh, detergent shipments done on that, that site. You can uh, remotely monitor what the dishwasher is doing. Um, maybe somebody in the comments can let us know about some other features or why that's great. Uh, cycle wise, You've got your normal, which typically Mila keeps around 135, pots and pans, which I, I believe is either like 150 or 155, crystal, which is typically 115 degrees, quick wash, I think we'll do maybe a light boost. Typically, you know, that's a cycle just to, uh, to do, let's say you've got a dinner party, you've got people coming over and then, uh, you know, you're maybe serving an appetizer and you've got your little appetizer plates. Well, we want to get those appetizer plates back out of this dishwasher by the end of dinner so that we can use them for dessert. This will do a, um, a cycle that's typically less than an hour, maybe even less than that, um, you know, for lightly soiled things. So I'll, I'll give those plates a light rinse. I'll stick them in there. They're going to get partially dried, but not fully dry. So I might need to towel dry them before I put my cheesecake on those plates and serve them again. That is not a main cycle. If you're using that as your, as your main cycle, you're a dope. Uh, that's not what it's designed for. Everything takes three hours, guys. All dishwashers, they're all going to take three hours. Mila does give you the option for this uh, express feature, which will, um, which will I think, sacrifice some of the energy use to, to, to shave about 20% of your cycle time. Uh, Mila also uses sensors. So if you're, you know, if you're putting in dirty dishes, it's going to take a little bit longer because the sensors are going to pick up on that and they're going to use more rinses. Uh, if you're putting in relatively clean dishes because you, you can't be broken of, of rinsing your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher, A, I'd recommend stop doing that and just use rinse and hold. Uh, but B, it will cut down your, your uh, cycle time. So if it says three hours, it may actually finish in about half that time if you're putting in relatively clean dishes. Um, you've got your Santa wash, which I believe is over 160 degrees. And then we've also got more uh, cycles that are hidden back there, like your rinse and hold. Um, I think there's also a grates and filters cycle for the, their range grates and their hood filters. Um, and uh, their settings menu will be back there. You can also see that there's an intensive option there. So I'm guessing what that does is it gives you more pressure to that, uh, to that lower wash arm, um, but probably only on your, on your normal and your heavy wash, maybe not on the, on the China crystal obvious, for obvious reasons. Um, and then there's your auto dose. So I'm guessing that's an on off, your, uh, your time delay. And uh, now you've got, a, again, that on-screen readout. Uh, all of this is in a black glass. Uh, the way that the dishwasher bumps out a little bit, this is definitely new. Um, and uh, that's it. I'm going to end the video there, and I'll uh, see you guys next time. Bye.